Yeah, just a disappointed locker room. Um, congratulations to West Virginia. They're playing really good basketball right now, not just tonight, but the last, you know, five, six, seven games. They got an offensive identity, and um, I think they're guarding a little bit better. Um, a lot of respect for their team, and so congratulate them on a road, road win in the Big 12. Uh, the message to our guys in the locker room, you know, learned a lot of things from Coach Knight. Probably the top of the list would be, you know, victory favors the team with the fewest mistakes. Um, you got to be aggressive. That goes without saying. Tonight, I thought both teams wanted to, wanted to win. Both teams were trying to play aggressive. But I thought it was a classic example of the team that made the more mistakes, lost the game. That was us. Just too many timely mistakes, not only at the end of the game, uh, but in the first half where we had some opportunities to maybe have a halftime lead. Uh, just, you know, untimely, costly mistakes uh, throughout the game. Um, that was the kind of the message. Uh, a lot of basketball left. Um, not sure when we play again with this next game being canceled, but we'll wait to hear what the Big 12 uh, says, and then we'll get back to the drawing board. Um, but, you know, just ran out of time tonight against a really good team, and congratulate those guys, our guys. We just got to play better. You spoke about mistakes. Marcus got two quick fouls in that first half, and that kind of hurt you all in terms of game planning, just kind of working through him and your best players. I guess, can you just speak to how difficult it was to kind of work through some of those uh, foul troubles with Marcus and uh, Micah and uh, Kevin in that first half? Yeah, a lot of disappointing things tonight, a lot of self-inflicted adversity. Um, at the top of that list, I would agree with you, Marcus is foul trouble. You know, I don't want to speak for him. Um, and I don't want to speak before I watch the film. Um, but I do know this. He's got to be a lot more disciplined. He's one of our best players. We need him on the court. Um, and and I, I'll just leave it at that. Last one for me. Uh, you guys took the lead late. I guess, did, did you feel like you had momentum at that point? Or did it just feel like it was one of those game of runs where you just kind of had to really, really kind of, as you've talked about, just really kind of fight it off? Well, very similar to the game in Morgantown and very similar to other games with West Virginia over the years. Um, you know, I liked our fight, uh, get ourselves back in the game, take the lead. Now it turns into a you know, four or five minute game like most of them do. Um, again, the story tonight, uh, just too many mistakes uh, down the stretch, whether it be a turnover, a non-jump stop charge, um, an opportunity to get one of their best shooters, maybe a no touch. Um, thought we had a couple of fatigue errors, which is really disappointing. Um, you know, in a game like this in February, you got to be mentally tough when you're a little physically tired. Um, so just a lot of mistakes down the stretch. But that's not to take away from West Virginia and the plays that they made to win the game. You know, congratulate those guys. Hey, Joe Yeager. Yeah, Coach, uh, <clears throat> the technical fouls there at the end, Looked like they were intended to send some sort of a message. Uh, what was the message, and who was the intended recipient? No, there was no message there. I just thought that, um, you know, sometimes from a coaching standpoint, you got to, you know, fight for your players. And um, obviously, college basketball, you guys know the drill. Um, you know, Big 12 policy and all that. But, uh, you know, I would just say that um, from my point of view, uh, the West Virginia player was calling for a timeout on the floor. Um, I could see it and hear it where I was standing. Um, it's still a two-possession game at that point. Um, you know, if, if that call is made, then we've got a chance to set up our press and, you know, still have a chance to play the game. Um, that call sent a 90% free throw shooter to the line, and it's going to separate the game to a three-possession game. So, um, you guys know me. I've been in this league five years. I don't think I've ever gotten a technical. At Little Rock, I think we got one. Uh, that's not my deal. Um, I know what bad officiating looks like. I've coached at all different levels. These guys are the best of the best. Uh, these three guys out there tonight, not only do I like, I respect, and trust them, um, but just in college basketball, sometimes you got to fight for your players. Uh, and, I, and that was my decision uh, tonight to do that. Eric Kelly. In terms of Sean McNeil's uh, big night, how much of it was you guys not playing good three-point defense and how much of it was him just making some tough shots there at the end? Well, I think it's a combination of both. You've got to give the player a lot of credit. Um, 
you know, he's a really, really good shooter, um, plus some other things. He's a good player. And I think when they were down tonight with one of their best players um, not playing or I don't think he played at all. Did he get in the game at all? Uh, so, you know, that's what happens. Good teams, good players, you, opportunities come in different forms. So, he had an outstanding game shooting the ball. Um, I'd have to watch the film to have a total assessment, but I do know this. Um, we had an opportunity a couple times to limit his catches and just didn't take advantage of those opportunities. Uh, when a guy is shooting the ball like that, defense isn't always let me stop you after you get the ball. You know, defense is let me not let you catch the ball. Um, and we, we let a couple of opportunities uh, pass this by tonight in the flow of the game. Uh, give West Virginia credit. And then I know you mentioned it's not for sure yet, but if there is no game Saturday, what do you? where's the area where you really want to see your team get better in this next couple days where you have those practices? Yeah, again, I thought tonight, like, the, like I opened with guys, I, you know, tonight was a game filled with mistakes with us. And, um, you know, you're not going to win every game at this level, but you got to go out there and give yourselves a chance each night. And tonight, I didn't think we did that through self-inflicted uh, mistakes. You know, whether it be a missed block out, uh, a, a, a turnover we could, we could control, um, shot selection, uh, defensive assignments, um, some game plan things where we're all on the same page and one player's not. So, you know, that always starts and finishes with the head coach. So I think what we've got to work on, uh, regardless of how many days we have before our next game, is, is just, uh, you know, getting back to things like consistency, uh, making sure we're all on the same page. You know, that starts with me and bleeds down into the players. So I thought the guys played hard tonight. Uh, they wanted to win. Um, it's a hurt locker room right now. Um, it's just, you know, again, there's a mistake factor in this game. You know, you get two good teams both playing aggressive. Um, this is what March basketball looks like. Now, what's going to be the difference? And, you know, one team's got to play better than the other if both are punching each other. And a part of playing well is uh, eliminating mistakes. And I, I just thought that we, we did a lot of self-inflicted things tonight. And, again, that's not uh, saying that West Virginia didn't play well. They did. You know, I'll be really clear on that. West Virginia deserved to win the game. Uh, they played better. Uh, they were the tougher team tonight. We don't say that a lot around here, um, but we're true tellers. Mac, for you, when you guys watch this back or just kind of gut reaction, what's going to be the thing that's going to frustrate you all the most about this loss? Um, I'd say we were we were very prepared for the game, and you know, um, it just it's, it was such a great opportunity um, to win this game and where it would put us and as a team, and it was just, you know, didn't execute, did a lot of things wrong. Um, Got to fix it. It's unacceptable. Carlos, you have a question? Marcus, how frustrating was it for you to be in foul trouble and then kind of foul out to later in that contest and not be able to kind of help in this contest? Um, frustrating a lot because Every single game I've been played here, I'm always in foul trouble, not being disciplined. And once again, I screwed the team again, over again with my foul troubling. Just need to work on that and just stop fouling. Because whenever I foul, we, I, met, I, I screwed the team up the whole time when I do it. Can you just speak to some of the positives that you did as well? Uh, when you were on the floor for those few minutes, you had an assist that kind of allowed uh, y'all to take that lead with Pat McClung's three. And I guess what, what were some of the things that, that you were able to do and that, that you did see when, when you were on the court? Um, yeah, that was one of them. But just messing up the whole game plan without me in there. Like Coach says, when I'm in foul trouble, it's a different team out there. And that's on me. I came here to help this team win, and I'm not doing my job. Always in foul trouble. It's what Max said, uh, Marcus, j just in terms of the opportunity that you all had tonight where obviously uh, there's going to be some time between this and maybe your next game. I guess what, what were you all kind of focused in on and what was the game plan in just terms of just your mindset coming into this contest? Um, game plan wise, the coaches had everything for us prepared and us as, as a team, we didn't come in and do it, especially me, the main one. We we focused on not fouling. We set up a defense to not let me foul, and I still did it. So I put this one on me. Mac, you, you've obviously had some some good offensive nights. Can you just speak to what Sean McNeil was able to do for West Virginia and what allowed him to be successful tonight? 
Um, a lot of that was on me. I, I left him. Um, you know, he's a knockdown shooter. That's what he does. And, you know, in the shot clock, I got to know better to not leave my man to help. He, I got to stay on him. It was just, it's unacceptable. Last one for me, just from uh, both of y'all, Marcus and Mac. Uh, Marcus, being a lone senior, what's the uh, message going forward? Uh, j just as a veteran leader, and then Mac, just uh, your message to, to this team, uh, kind of being the, the, the guy that's kind of led them through through some of these tough times. Um, like what KY told us after when um, Beer got thrown out the game, he's saying this is what happens when we don't come in focused and locked in and prepared. It's, it's February, March, the last two months. We got to be focused and locked in as a whole, especially me. Um, for either of y'all that want to answer this, um, in terms of down the stretch, what was the biggest thing after you guys tied it at 60 that West Virginia did better than y'all to close it out? Um, get to the free throw line. They shot a total of 39 free throws today. And just they was going in demand the foul the whole time, able to get easy ones at the free throw line. And then, yeah, that was the main one. They was getting to the free throw line.